Hello, I'm Stav Shafir, and I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm sorry that I can't be in person uh, in the conference. I know it's a very important one, but we're in the middle of a very busy and hectic Knesset session, so it's important that I'm here in Israel, and I'm happy to answer the questions that you um, posted. Three years ago, the people in Israel rose to the streets in an amazing movement um, against the government policy. It started with a very small group of people who protested on housing prices, but it became a protest on the relation between citizens and the states. It um, spread into the whole of Israel with 120 tent camps all across the country protesting for social justice, talking about housing, talking about um, work relations and the, the, the job market, and talking about our, the relations and the responsibility the gov that the government has on the people, what the government is doing with our tax money, how the government is taking care of social services, what is the future of social services in Israel. And after a few weeks, it became the biggest protest movement that Israel had ever known with half a million people protesting in the biggest rally that, that happened here um, since the establishment of Israel, just to get the comparison, the equivalence of half a million Israelis on the streets would be 19 million Americans on the streets. Something that to, for us, the activists, uh, seemed like a miracle. Finally, we're managing to change what ha what's happening here. And in Israel, this was a really big change because up until the protest, the discourse, uh, the public discourse in Israel was mostly around security. If you open the newspapers, you would see the Iranian threat, the Palestinian, uh, the Palestinians and the conflict. Normally, Israelis would not talk about their day-to-day -day problems, about their jobs and about their problem to go to the supermarket and get food and their housing problems and the lack of ability to even rent a house in normal conditions. But then the protests finally got people to talk and discuss the most basic day-to-day uh, -day problems that we have in our lives and to get together around common issues. After a really big wave of, uh, of that protest feeling and with us feeling that finally something is about to change, we felt a huge disappointment. The government, not only that it didn't change anything um, in relation to our demands, it also made everything that it could in order to stop the protest, starting by um, opening, establishing a committee, a governmental committee um, that was made, it was called the Trachtenberg Committee, maybe some of you have heard of it, that was um, intended to block any criticism on the government, creating the creating the sense that if the government is taking care of the problems, but we're not actually doing that. The second thing was to um, stop the protest violently by using police force against us protesters and threatening us that if we protest on the street, we will, go to, um, we will get arrested. While the protest movement kept being nonviolent, the government used very harsh violence against us. And then we had to make a decision. A year after the protest, I made a decision to get into politics, to get into here, into Knesset, and try to change things from the inside. It wasn't an easy decision, and I think that my fellow protesters around the world can understand that and identify with it, because we were not the only protest around. We, we know that there are solutions to the problems that we present, and we don't understand why the government is not adopting them. That lack of um, confidence in our governments created what we see today in the elections, lower and lower um, voting rates, lower participation in the political field. And, and, and with that lower participation, also lower criticism and, and the lack of ability to understand what are the sources of this um, lack of confidence, of our feeling that somebody there was supposed to serve our needs is not actually doing that. That created also a general feeling and a general atmosphere amongst these protest movements that politics is wrong. And I personally shared 
that feeling. I didn't want to be any part of any political party. I thought that we had to change things from the outside, that we shouldn't be inside because once we get into the, into the system, we get corrupt and, and the system, and, and we become the system itself, not, a, not able to change that. Now it's been a year and a half, nearly a year and a half since I'm in parliament. And today I feel completely different about that. I managed to prove to myself and to many other people how much power we have when we decide to get political. And the fact that we don't really have the privilege of not doing that. When I decided to run, I chose the most democratic party in my camp, in the, left, in the leftist camp in Israel, the Labour Party. And I wanted to run and get elected democratically to show that it was possible. It's possible for a young person who came with no money and with no political power to get into that system and start to make changes. I got, um, as a member of parliament, I got um, directly into the finance committee. It's one of the most important committees within Knesset and it's mainly dealing with the Israeli budget. It took me a year of a struggle in order to change dramatically the way that the budget system is constructed in Israel, to create for the first time ever transparency in that system, exposing the real priorities of the government around the budget, showing or giving the answer to all of those Israelis who asked, where is our money? How come we don't have money to, to put in these social services, to put in education and in, and in healthcare? and all of the things that we need to give them an answer to that. I found that money and now I can show Israelis exactly what we can do with that money that the government for some reason is not willing to do. Will the protest movement get back? It's something that is very hard to expect or to plan. A day before we started the protest here, we expected about 50 people to show up to our protest. We were very surprised to see a thousand people at first and then hundreds of thousands. It was not part of the plan and I don't think that anybody can plan such protest or any other protest. What I know that we have to do is to get ourselves more political power. Our generation is very strong. It has many skills that our parents didn't have. It has a much greater access to knowledge, much better access to experience, to information, to other people around the world, we're not using it enough. Instead of staying in the internet and, and, and focusing on talking, we have to get better influence for ourselves. And this we do from within the systems. It's not enough to say that the system is corrupt and that there are negative people who don't want to do what the people are asking them to do. This is obvious. That's how the system works. It was even worse historically. Today, we have dem we're in democracies, have the power to change that. We don't like the people in the system, let's come and replace them. We don't have the privilege of not doing that. If we're not doing that, we're allowing all of these problems that we all protested, about, protested on to continue forever. It will never stop. It will definitely not stop if we'll add another status on Facebook or just focus on, um, on complaining instead of doing that. The work that we can do when we collaborate, protest movements on the street, with politicians within the system, with party mem members, with the workers' unions, the work that we can do together is so much stronger and so much more effective than what we do when we're on our own and when we decide to focus on only one field of activism. This is just not enough. The one of the, of, of the experiences that we had within the protest was the work with the unions. Sometimes unions think that their mission is to only defend their workers. And they focus on their personal group and their personal interest and don't see the purpose and the goals of the entire society and the needs of the entire society and how they are playing a part within that society. It's very important for me to thank the Ebert Foundation who were accompanying us and the protest movement from the very beginning, giving us a lot of power and helping us in every step in the protest and in um, the route into politics. It is very important for all of these um, forces to gather together and every help is extremely needed.